Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to talk about myelopathy and radiculopathy signs. The disclaimer is always the same. This video is among the series of video I will cover regarding topics associated in spine. Now let's begin. So what is myelopathy? Myelopathy is a result of a spinal cord compression whereby radiculopathy refers to the compression of an individual nerve root. Okay, etiology of myelopathy The natural history of cervical spondylolytic myelopathy is a stepwise or step ladder deterioration in around 70% of patients and 30% will progress to severe disability if not managed properly. The potential causes of neural damage is suggested to be by A. Direct compression or B. Vascular ischemia as illustrated in this picture. Okay, as illustrated, among the causes are posterior ostified. You can see from this illustration at the level of CT vertebral body, dissociation of the posterior longitudinal ligament from the C4 vertebral body, loss of the intervertebral disc height with migration of the disc material into the canal. Number four, hypermobility and distasis as shown as did as this picture shows there is a retrolistasis of C6 to C7 there is an ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament there is a hypertrophy or ossification of the ligamentum levum presentation of myelopathy patient can can give history such as example neck pain or stiffness, extremity and paresthesia, weakness and clumsiness, gait instability and the worst part is they can present with urinary retention or bowel disturbance. For physical examination, we start by asking the patient to walk in cervical spondylolytic myelopathy patient. Patient will have a broad based gait. There is a classification by neuric. It is based on the gait and ambulatory function. In grade 0, the sign and symptom of root involvement is present but without evidence of spinal cord disease. Grade 1, there is signs of spinal cord compression but patient has no difficulty in walking. In grade 2, there is slight difficulty in walking but patient does not have problem in being employed. In grade 3, there is a gait difficulties preventing employment, but patient still able to walk unassisted. Grade 4, patient able to walk with assistance. And grade 5, patient usually is wheelchair or back patient. Stabil, eh? In this video, okay. I will show you the how Patient who has cervical spondylotic myelopathy walk with unsteady gait and there is a bit difficulty in turning. There is a positive sagittal balance on his right side. Okay. There is a walking aid. As you can see, among the upper motor neuron lesion signs that need to be elicited are hyperreflexia. Hyperreflexia is defined as overactivity of physiological or deep tendon reflexes. Hyperreflexia indicates an upper motor neuron lesion and reflects a loss of inhibitory modulation of the motor pathway. It is often associated with increased muscle tone spasticity. In this video, there is an exaggerated tricep reflex elicited by tapping the tricep tendon. So another upper motor neuron lesion signs include inverted supinator reflex. Usually it shows a lesion at area of C5 to C6 level elicited by tapping the radius dilate region. See here, positive there is an exaggerated contraction of the finger flexor muscle. 
it is caused by intraspinal spread and increased activity of the upper motor neuron below the level of the lesion and loss of dose at the level of the lesion. You can see, when tapping at the radius style of region, there's a exaggerated contraction, contraction of the finger flexor muscle. So another sign that we could elicit is Hoffman sign. It is elicited by holding still the PIPJ of the middle finger and flicking the DIPJ, which stay in the phalangeal joint. Positive, we show an involuntary motion of the index and the thumb. You can see here, there is an exaggerated flexion of the index and the thumb. So, what is a sign? There is an disinhibition of tendon stretch reflex of the long flexor tendons of the fingers. The root value is C7 and C8. The wrist flexor root value of C6, C7 and or all with the involvement of the pyramidal tracts. This is the author itself. And then what he did is he will tap with his middle finger or gently with a tendon hammer at the extended wrist around the palmaris longus tendon. Patient with cervical malopathy would have an exaggerated wrist point by flexing their fingers, thumb and wrist. Under the signs of a cervical spondylitic malopathy, patient will present with scapulohumeral reflex or shimizu sign. Scapulohumeral reflex sign is elicited by the tapping of the tip of the spine of the scapula and acromion. It will show a hyperactive reaction. There will be an elevation of the scapula or an abduction of the humerus that have been clearly defined after tapping at this point. So I will show you by this video. Okay. And the major muscle participating in the scapulohumeral reflex are considered to be the upper portion of the trapezius, the levator scapula, and the deltoid. Usually indicate a high lesion above the C4 level. Again. Okay, next. Grip and release test is an alternating between closing into a fist and full finger extension. Normal frequency is about 20 times in 10 seconds. Positive, patient unable to do it within 10 seconds. Okay, excuse the chubby fingers. This is the alternating between closing a fist and full finger extension and should be done within 10 seconds. In finger escape sign, there is an inability to maintain the fully extended fingers in adduction. There is tendency of the little finger to abduct, as shown by this video. Okay, Babinski reflex. It is a stimulation of the lateral plantar aspect of the foot that leads to extension or dosification of the big toes. They may be fanning of the other toes. Normal, normal flexor plantar response is this. But then when there is a stimulation at lateral aspect of the foot, we cause extension of the big toe with the fanning of the other toes. Radiculopathy. Radiculopathy is a mechanical compression of a nerve root, usually at the exit foramen or lateral recess. It is a clinical condition in whereby the compression occur in one or more nerve resulting in impact function, a neuropathy. So as illustrated by this picture, you can see there's a extruded disc causing the nerve to be trapped. Patient usually will presented with pain, radicular pain, weakness of the affected limbs, numbness and paresthesia, 
for paresthesia and difficulty in controlling specific muscle. Radiculopathy can affect any part of the spine. Most common site of radiculopathy is the cervical. We call it as cervical radiculopathy and the lumbar spine, lumbar radiculopathy. It is less commonly found in the middle portion of the spine. So what is sciatica? Sciatica is lumbar radiculopathy whereby a portion of the sciatic nerve is compressed. So among the common cause is the either due to bulging of the disc or herniated disc. The symptoms of radiculopathy depends on which nerve that are affected. The nerve exiting from the cervical spine control the muscles of the neck and arms and supply the sensation there. This picture shows the dermatom and myotom of the upper and lower limb. This slide shows the examination of the upper limb neurology. In C5, we can ask the patient to shrug the shoulder or flex the elbow joint. There is a sensory loss around the tip of the shoulder. In C6 level, we ask the patient to extend the wrist and test the muscle power. Reflex of the bicep will be weak or absent. There is a sensory loss of the thumb and index finger. For C7 level, we test the power by asking the patient to extend the elbow. We can test the tricep for the reflexes. The sensory affected usually at the middle finger. For C8 level, we ask the patient to flex the fingers or grip to assess the muscle power. There will be a sensory loss at the ring and little finger. For T1 muscle power, we can test by asking the patient to abduct the fingers. The nerve from the middle portion of the back, thoracic spine, control the muscles of the chest and abdomen and supply the sensation there. The nerve from the lower back, lumbar spine, control the muscle of the buttocks and leg and supply the sensation there. This picture shows about Asia chart. T4 level is at the nipple line. T10 is at the umbilical region. Asia chart is going be to be covered in another slide presentation. In examination of the lower limb, this picture shows the summary of lower limb motor supply. For L2, I will ask the patient to flex the hip and test the muscle power. For L3 region, I will ask the patient to extend the knee and test the muscle power. For L4 region, I will ask the patient to dorsiflex the ankle joint and test the muscle power. For L5 region, I will ask patient to extend the big toe. For X1 region, I will ask the patient to plantar flex the ankle joint and test for the muscle power. I hope you have learned something from this presentation. So, any question? If not, okay, bye and thank you.